Hi everybody, my name is Jessie and I do perfume reviews in ASMR format. So if you like perfume and also if you like ASMR, you are in a good place for our video today. Alright, so today I am reviewing, this is by the brand Jo Malone, and this is called Wood, Sage, and Sea Salt. As you can see, I've got a small size, it's just 30 mils, and um, it looks a little different than the larger bottles, but the Jo Malone fragrances are fairly expensive, so um, I thought I would do just fine with a smaller size. I'll show you later, but I actually have three other John Milan fragrances that I have in these really cute 4ml sprays. So I love them because they're very small and of course more affordable, but they're only four milliliters. They're still not cheap. You can, you can usually find these for like under, a little under 20 online, but that's still not cheap. Just a tip if you don't want to go for a whole bottle. So yeah, I'll be reviewing, I'll be smelling and reviewing this fragrance with you today. Um, as usual, I dressed on theme, so I thought that this fragrance deserved a blue shirt. It kind of has a blue-green-brown vibe, like a very natural marine natural vibe, but a little bit of the, like, ocean meets land, too. Um, but anyway, I went with a blue shirt, and then I've got these, um, seashell earrings. So I thought those were good, too, because it definitely has a marine vibe to it. And I'm fresh out of the shower, so I feel like that kind of works as well. Let me grab, I forgot to grab a piece of paper. All right. I really thought I'd already reviewed this fragrance because I don't know, it's just such a classic and I've had it for quite a while. Um, so today we've got a little, little angel. I think my kitty is getting ready to jump up and join. Yes. Um, so hopefully he won't be too disruptive if he does that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a smell. I can smell it very well from the bottle, but I'll just go ahead and smell, uh, spray it so I can really get the scent going. Alright, so I'm just letting this dry down. So, first impressions, even though I've smelled this many times before. Mm, it's very fresh. It's bright, but in a toned down, very calming, natural sort of way. It definitely evokes the sea, the ocean. Has a little bit of saltiness, but not super salty. I feel like this is the right amount of salt that I, I think a lot of people would appreciate. And honestly, I think a lot of people do appreciate this fragrance. So yeah. What gives it a brightness is there's some citrus in here, and it definitely comes through. And then there is something that's a little bit more woody and also herbal, which, um, you know, as the name implies, wood, sage, and sea salt. So you get a little bit of the kind of herbal aromatic coming through from the sage, and then also... Um, yeah, it's just like a touch, like, woody, sandy, almost. So, I'm gonna go ahead and read on Fragrantica the main accords that we have listed. Okay, so first, we have aromatic, salty, 
marine, citrus, musky, herbal, soft, spicy, floral, and aquatic. So yeah, I get most of that. Mostly the marine, citrus, aromatic, salty. That's mostly what I get. And then let's look at the notes. Um, and just so you know, I do think that this was reformulated. Um, I'm kind of, I'm looking, let's see. With sage and sea salt. I do think that this might have been reformulated um, in recent years because, let's see. This current one that I'm looking at, which is, I know this is the one I have, was launched in 2014, and then I'm seeing online that there was one launched in 2022 that apparently, I don't know if it's like in addition to this or instead of this, but I'm just seeing that, and it has slightly different notes, so just, just know that might be the case, and I know though that this one is the 2014 version, which is what I'm reading right now online. Okay, so this only has five notes, five notes, and they're just listed as notes, not as top, middle, or base notes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read you the notes that we have. So we have a note of sea salt, sage, grapefruit, ambrette, also known as musk mallow. It's a plant-based musk. And then lastly, we have a note of seaweed. That's so funny. I really could have sworn there was like a driftwood note in here. I feel like it deserves a driftwood note, but I guess there's no driftwood note. So, yeah. I get all of those notes. The only one that I'm going to hesitate on is the seaweed. Um, because I feel like I definitely get the sea salt. Seaweed, um, maybe, but it, it's not at all, like, fishy, dirty marine. So, I don't know. If, if I do get the seaweed, it's coming through in kind of like a fresh, fresh ocean green way. But yeah, I'm definitely getting the sea salt, the sage, the grapefruit. Those are probably the three notes that I'm getting the most. And then, yeah, there's a bit of musk, which just kind of smooths it out. Makes it feel like a nice, soft air. I feel like... I don't know. If I had to picture, like, what the beach scene would be, I feel like it would be you're walking on the beach. It's more of like a coast, that's what I would say. It's not beachy tropical. It's like you're walking on the coast, like a cooler coast. Maybe almost like the Oregon coast. And it's maybe like 65 degrees. There's a little bit of sun, but it, it's kind of like a, a little bit of a cool air. Yeah. The breeze is picking up some sage and other green things from the hillside. That's kind of the vibe. So, let's come back to this, but first I wanted to just briefly touch on the minis that I have in my collection here. So, I'll go ahead and start um, with this one. This one's called Orange Bitters. And this is, I smelled this, I smelled a sample of this at, I think it was Nordstrom. I actually was able to take home like a little, a little sample for free. And I just fell in love with it right away. Um, so this is one of the first samples that really kind of got me on my recent perfume journey about three or so years ago. Um, so what this is, is, um, well, as you can see, it's called Orange Bitters. It, you definitely get orange citrus coming through. And it's really not sweet. It's, I wouldn't necessarily say it's like bitter, bitter, but it's definitely not sweet. Um, so 
you do have a bitter orange note as well as an orange note, a mandarin orange note, and then what they just call citruses. You have a dried plum note as well, which I really hardly get at all. And then in the base, you've got sandalwood and amber, which I do get. And especially as this dries down, the citruses really burn off and you're just left with like a ambery sandalwood base. So it actually is quite deep. It doesn't smell deep right away because you smell all the citrus. But after even half an hour, an hour, it just becomes more like a woody, ambery type smell. Kind of smells almost like festive holiday Christmas. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times I associate orange with the holidays and then it has some of those like deeper ambery notes. So that's Jo Malone Orange Bitters. I would say this is straight up unisex um and then next one that i wanted to show you this one's called nectarine blossom and honey by joe malone so as you can imagine sweet fruity honey and i feel like nectarine and honey kind of they just kind of pair together but honestly this is more nectarine to me it's not like a super dense thick honey smell. It's more of like a shower gel, fresh, light, bright nectarine. So let's go ahead and look at the notes that we have here. Actually, you know what? There's no honey note. That's so funny because usually with the Joe Malone, um, type the names, they like give you a pretty good idea of what is in here, but there's no honey note. So it makes sense though, because like I said, I don't really get honey. I just get bright, sweet, fruity. So we've got nectarine as well as peach and plum and cur black currant. So a lot of like pretty sweet, syrupy, mostly stone fruits. The nectarine comes through the most, probably followed by the peach. And then we've got green notes as well as pedigrain. So it's got a kind of a very fresh green, almost citrusy brightness to it. Yeah, that's mainly what I'm getting coming through. So yeah, kind of shower jelly, almost something that I would think you might find at like Bath and Body Works or something like that. But honestly, I don't know because I, I literally never go to Bath and Body Works. So I don't know what their current offerings smell like, but you know, that kind of scent profile. Okay, so that is Nectarine Blossom and Honey. And then lastly, here's another mini that I have, and this one is called English Pear and Freesia. This one is pretty popular in their line, and this one is a floral. It's like a fruity floral. It's very, very sweet and very high-pitched, and I would say sharp and honestly when I first got this I was like really really into it and I I might sell this but I might not because it's so low it's, it's like it's got like two milliliters left um it's just two at this point it's a little too crisp and scratchy and sharp for me um but it's very pretty. So what I mostly get is pear and freesia. I'm like, of course, that's what it's called. Um, but yeah, you really do mostly get pear and freesia. There's also a note of melon and rhubarb. I think the rhubarb is part of what gives it like an even more kind of high-pitched tartness. Because you know rhubarb is a little bit, um, yeah, like sour tart. Then in the base, we've got some musk and patchouli. I do get a touch of patchouli. It does give it a slight more bit of earthiness, but it's mostly a very sweet floral fragrance. And like I said, I don't know what's changed, but I think it's just a little too much for me at this point. So that's English Pear and Freesia by Joe Malone. Okay, so back to wood, sage, and sea salt. Let's just go over some statistics and then we'll read some 
reviews on Fragrantica. So, um, it has an overall rating of 4.24 out of 5 with almost 9,000 votes. So, what that means is this is a re that's a really good rating. You often don't see that high of a rating on Fragrantica, especially for the fact that it has almost 9,000 votes. So, that tells me that people really like this fragrance overall. And for the fact that it's kind of a lighter, freshy, that's pretty rare. A lot of times the ones that get such good ratings are super bold and deep and heavy. This was launched, by the way, in 2014, so it has been out for a full decade now. Um, let's read some... Oh, let's see. One other thing first. So it's being rated as having pretty poor longevity, and a lot of the Jo Malone fragrances are said to have not great longevity. Um, I agree. I don't think it has great longevity, but... I can smell it still after several hours, especially now that I'm pregnant. Everything I realize is actually there, even when you might not realize it, it still is there making a scent. Um, Siage is being rated as on the more intimate side. I agree. It's a more subtle fragrance. It's not like a full-on skin scent, but it's in that, getting more in that direction gender, it's being rated as pretty unisex, but a, just a touch feminine leaning. I agree. I think it is fairly unisex, but a little more feminine. Price value, it's being rated as slightly overpriced. I can understand that, because yeah, Jo Malone is expensive. Okay, and then let's go ahead and just read some reviews to finish up. Somebody says, I love it. Purely unisex, classy, youthful, fun, adventurous. Why does everything by Jo Malone have horrendous longevity? Yeah, so I would agree with that, you know, what they said. Okay, next, somebody says, this was unfortunately a disappointment. Don't get me wrong, the scent is beautiful, slightly salty marine notes, lots of aromatic goodness, but at the same time, very fresh. But since this disappears from my skin within 30 minutes of spring, I cannot justify purchasing a full bottle. Hope we get an EDP version someday. Um, so yeah, obviously you could go ahead and buy the lotion of this and that would help the longevity. You could just buy a plain lotion of any brand, unscented, put it on and then put this on after, that would help could do what I do, which is spray it on my clothes more so, and I find that it lasts longer in your clothes because it's not getting absorbed into your skin, bloodstream, quite the same way. Um, so those are some thoughts. Somebody who doesn't like this says, I'm not a fan. It smelled like Perfect by Mark J. Jacobs, but more heavy and it does not work well on my skin, especially in the summer heat. I don't think this smells like Perfect by Marc Jacobs, personally. Somebody who likes it says, clean and inoffensive. I used to dislike this, but now my preferences are changing and I enjoy it. I love observing the ways I change and mature through perfumes. I gave a man... I gave a man that I was seeing a travel size of this. I know you may be thinking I shouldn't be so kind to a man, but he was very similar to my lesbian best friend, so in my mind he deserves, he deserves to live. <laughs> That's a funny thing to say. Um, yeah, so anyway, those are some reviews from people on Fragrantica. I hope you all enjoyed. My review of Joe Malone, Wood, Sage, and Sea Salt. I really love this fragrance. I feel like it's pretty great overall. There's obviously the longevity issue. There's a lot of brands who have made dupes of this, so you could look for, look for a brand through a dupe house, but I personally don't know. I can't speak to those myself, so you might want to read reviews. 
Okay, everybody, I am sending you all peace, love, harmony, and beauty, and I'll catch you all again soon. Okay, bye.